Hey everybody, we're out here at the Shell House out here on Camp Bullis. Today we're going to look at a lot of venomous and non-venomous snakes. Now you may think to yourself, well there's surely not that many kinds of venomous snakes around the Joint Base San Antonio. But let me tell you, there are five kinds right here in Bear County. And we're going to take a look at all five. Hey Brian. Hey David. Hey, thanks for having me come out today and uh, hosting us here as we talk about the venomous snakes that are in and around Joint Base San Antonio. Glad to do it. Glad to make it. Brian, tell me, uh, how do you work at such a paradise like Camp Bullis? Uh, how long have you been here, by the way? Uh, I've been here for about three years. It is a, a wonderful base just north of San Antonio. And uh, we do encounter snakes on a regular basis in the springtime. Well, you know, it's funny you say that, uh, Brian. I don't know if folks out there know it, but I, I came out here a week ago and I met uh, Lucas Cooksey. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were around one of the, I believe this tree right here, and we walked out initially and I didn't see it. We came back and there was a six foot snake skin hanging off that tree. Now, I think you guys set me up on that. We did not set okay, you up on right, that. Okay, all right, all right. Well, I, I felt you did, but no big deal. But today, you, you, you've actually brought someone who is a, a uh, I guess you would say, a resident expert mm -hmm. on the snake population here. Yes. Why don't, you, uh, why don't you invite him on in? Come on, Blaine. Now, now, who's this gentleman again? This is Blaine Eaton. Good to see you, Blaine. Good to see you. Hey, sir, how are you? Doing real good. Now, Blaine, I see you got, uh, you got something there in your paws there. What exactly is this uh, creature you have there, Blaine? What I brought here is a bull snake, one of the most common snakes in the area, and the second largest snake in Texas. And they're commonly mistaken for rattlesnakes because they frequent, they're very common in and around the area. And uh, these are one of the snakes that's also common in getting into chicken houses. Uh, some people call it the chicken snake. It's uh, one of the snakes that's notorious for getting into eating the eggs and the baby chicks. So that's why Grandma always had that broom in her hand out of the chicken coop. Exactly. <laughs> now, Blaine, tell me something here. Uh, this this creature here, what what uh, normally does it like uh, as a habitat, and what is what kind of food does it go after? Its habitat is multi-habitat. You can find them in dry desert climate. You can find them in wooded areas, damp areas, rocky areas. Their food consists of rodents, birds, eggs, and uh, small reptiles. Uh, amazingly, they will kill and eat a rattlesnake. Uh, they're fast enough to grab it behind the head, constrict and kill it, and eat it. So they're beneficial to have around by eating rodents uh, that can contract rabies, and also by eating the snakes. I think you have these very snakes out here at Bullish. We absolutely have these very snakes out here at Bullish. Have you ever encountered these uh, when you're out, uh, let's say, doing a, like a safety walkthrough of a training area? Uh, yes, but our more common snakes are one that Blaine will bring out in a minute, oh, our I rat see. snakes. Oh, okay. Well, Blaine, why don't you uh, hustle on over that way and bring us another fellow up here. Wow, he's brought one up. What Now, what in the world is this thing? Okay, this is the Texas rat snake. This is the most common snake in Bear County. Uh, 80% of our snake calls on snake removal involve this snake. Now this is the true notorious chicken snake. Uh, their main diet is birds and eggs. They will eat rodents, but they prefer birds and eggs. These are snakes you'll see in the trees. You mentioned a snake skin. That was probably the skin of a Texas rat snake. And how big do they get? They get close to seven feet. Wow. Well, that would make sense because that skin, when we pulled it off, was about six foot long. So it was probably a five foot snake because that skin stretches as it shed it off. They're a happy snake. Uh, these snakes are snakes that you want to make pets out of. They're aggressive. When you corner them, they'll vibrate your tail on the ground, make it sound like a rattle, open their mouth, threaten you. You pick them up, they bite repeatedly. We get calls of rattlesnakes in trees where people have cornered them against a tree and they vibrate your tail on the bark. Uh, rattlesnakes do not climb. So when we get a call of a rattlesnake in a tree, we always know it's a Texas rat snake. Now, what what in the world is this thing right here? Now again, this is the bull snake. Now, it's as you a can bull snake. Okay. See from its markings, looks like look a rattlesnake, similar to a rattlesnake. Yeah. When they're cornered, again, they'll vibrate their tail in the ground. All of your snakes, when they're cornered, they vibrate their tail in the grass in the ground. Rattlesnakes just happen to have a noise maker on oh, the end. I grew up thing. in Kentucky. We had uh, the moccasin. The uh, cotton mouth. The cotton mouth would do that same very thing. Yes, it, it will. Uh, in Texas, uh, again, this is the second largest snake in Texas. These get a little over nine feet. 
uh, the record is about nine feet two inches. Wow. Uh, your largest snake in Texas is the blue indigo, which is a protected species. Right. And they are found here. Oh, they are. Really? Mm -hmm. We actually just came across the first one uh, in several years. Uh, Marco, our fire ant specialist, uh, found one crossing the road. He really? said it was an enormous black snake. <laughs> and we, we fl f thumbed through the book, and that's, that, that's what it was. A blue indigo snake. A blue indigo, indigo yes. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so they nice. can get close to 12 feet. 12 foot long. Uh, they're actually native to Texas. They were found in Texas down around Brownsville in 1898, but in 1929, the government brought them in out of Mexico to central Texas and parts of the East Coast for rattlesnake control. And because of that, they're federally protected. Well, he, he seems at home with you. He, he, Blaine, he looks like he's your friend. Oh, the bull snakes are very gentle. They make wonderful pets. <laughs> and he's wild caught. Is he? I prefer an AKC kind of This is a unique itself. snake. This is called an eastern hognose snake. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I've seen these too in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Now, people call these spread natters, puffin natters. Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll kind of puff they, out their cheeks. Where, thing, right? They puff out their head. They've got a hood that they spread like a cobra. They'll hiss loudly at you. They'll stand up like a cobra. If you start teasing it, it will roll over on its back and play dead. <laughs> Turn it over on its belly, it'll flip right back over on its back. Wow. Prove you it's still dead. Wow. Now, technically, this is a venomous snake. Yeah. The, on the back of each jaw in the rear are two little tiny fangs. Yes. This snake eats frogs and toads, and that venom paralyzes it, so essentially they're eating it while it's still alive. For you to get bit, you would have to pry its mouth open and stick your finger back there. The venom's not going to hurt a human. So I can't paralyze my boss with that snake's what you're no. saying? No. No, okay. Uh, so they're very neat snakes. So, so where would you find this snake? Uh, would it be around houses and such? The These are going to be in damp areas where you're going to find lots of frogs and toads, streams, okay. ponds, uh, people that have ponds in their yard, uh, even swimming pools Good. attract frogs and toads, and that attracts the hawk nose. But these are very common around here, and you'll see them around trees and brush. Uh, where they like to feed on birds and eggs, lizards, mm -hmm. rodents. All of the biologists out here at Camp Bullis are familiar with this animal. Uh, unlike a lot of these snakes which are active at night, the Cochup can be active during the daytime. You can see those very large, I mean their eyes, they've just got yeah. nice big, big eyes. They're extremely alert, they are extremely fast. They are out hunting, uh, I would say, most days they're out hunting and they cruise. I don't know exactly what their range is, but this one snake can cover a couple of acres would be my guess. And they are basically daytime hunters. Yes. I've never found one at night. Now, all the coach whips I've ever found have always been during the day. Mm -hmm. And they're normally, this one again, because it's, it's, it's more f familiar with humans, is, is very docile. These snakes in the wild, they will uh, like Blaine was saying, they'll, they'll stick their head up like a, t a periscope out of the grass so they can see what's going on. And if you start harassing them or they feel cornered, uh, they will strike at you, but they won't strike at your legs. They recognize what your eyeballs are. They will strike at your face. And, and some of them, when they get six and seven feet long, you know, when they're striking at your face, they're, they're getting close. I mean, a, a seven foot snake can strike and be anywhere between your waist that, and your That would your not chin. be an uncommon sight at so, all. So, you, Brian, you're telling me right now this is a, one of the most common snakes Absolutely. here in San Antonio. Yes. And on this rock wall, which a lot of folks up this way have rock walls, this would not be an uncommon thing to see? No, sir. Uh, in fact, I would say 80 to 90 percent of the calls that we get for, uh, for uh, snakes would be What's the this name snake of this right snake? Here. Or another thing, uh, this is a Texas rat snake. Texas rat snake. Yep. Another thing, if he doesn't want to get up on the wall, is um, you know, if we Look if we that. set this guy on a tree, he will climb right up a tree. Look at him go. Yeah. He's trying to get out of here. Oh yes. He's like, wait a minute here, these people have me up on this wall. Look at that. Well, it looks like our our rope theory is busted because we had the uh, we used the old cowboy mythology of the using the old rope to ward off a snake, and apparently that doesn't work. It does not work at all. <laughs> no, the the old adage is you put a horsehair rope around your campsite and the stiff bristles will keep the snakes away. You have to understand these snakes rub against rocks.